So we are now recording the July 31st, 2020 Small Business Accounting Advisors. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy hey, Friday. Hey. So everyone is working, working, working hard. Yes. Silent. Working very really hard. What? Wait, I'm working. Sort of. In spurts for some reason. That's me. Are you having like a focusing problem? Mm -hmm. Man. I've been just blocking things out and just sitting down and not <laughs> answering the phone, not doing Facebook, just work and study. I'm proud of you. I'm proud. <laughs> I do go it's still business. not enough. It's not enough. I'm talking to people and everybody's saying the same thing. It's like Everybody is saying the same finish. thing. Those that are not working are not, are sitting at home doing the Netflix binge and all of that. Those that are working are working twice as hard. Yes. Or, or harder. Or yeah. harder. I think that's why I keep getting these little phases where I'm like done. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, but the phone won't, won't get off here or the, you know, and then you'll get a lull and well, it's hard for me because not having employees here answering the phones for me, they always grab the phone. So I could actually get into a groove and if they know I'm really into something, they're not, they're going to say, sorry, she's busy or whatever. But see, I don't have that buffer anymore. So um, that's, oh, that's one of the things I got squirreled on today was looking at um, the voice. I have a voice over IP phone system, but looking at a different phone system and a phone system that'll work within teams. That'll work with what? Teams. Oh, we use, nice. Microsoft we use dial pad. Huh? That works. Dial pad works in teams. Right. So that's, that's on my list too. But what I'm looking for is something so that they can go if they don't, so they can dial the, their bookkeepers directly or the directory that says, okay, you know, and, and, um, and then something with call, you know, so that I can, you know, not answer. <laughs> I think you can do all of that in dial pad. Yeah. The so, big question is if you can keep your phone number. Yeah, uh, porting it. I can with Teams. So I, we're going to look at that first, except that they don't have a texting uh, feature. Dialpad has a texting feature. Yeah, that's, I think, why I got on my list originally. So anyway, but that's okay. part of my excuse anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have right? definitely oh, huh? <laughs> determined that Fridays are it for me. I need my weekends for myself. I just really do. I, I have to turn off and and have yep. time with my family and friends and, you know, because you can really, really get isolated staying at home, not doing anything <laughs> but working. Yeah. So that's really true. Yeah. That's, that's the danger of any of us all these years working out of our homes is it's too easy to, to come in and just keep on working, especially unless... Um, you know, you have a set dinner time and then that gets you into home mode right. and, you know, and then we're, we're binge watching, um, Heartland that was filmed in Canada. Canada. Yeah. I have, I've watched that. Everything. So <clears throat> we just go Heartland. <laughs> <laughs> Horse life. So you need that. You need that break. I, I really, really do. And I need to, you know, I, I have family that loves me and it would be <laughs> nice to have interaction with them. And the same with my friends. Hey, where you been? You know, not mm -hmm. a whole lot of things to do these days. But um, now that we can go out and eat outside, you know, it's nice to do that on a Saturday or Sunday when the weather is it's nice. hot here. Yeah, it's been hot here too, but there are certain places that you can go that it's a little bit cooler and, and enjoy your time. But yeah, I've been working in my office for such a long time that I have my own groove and routine. So since I have an office, I can walk into my office and be in work mood. Mm -hmm. And when I'm out of my office, I'm not. I'm on yeah. my you need time. That dedicated space. Dedicated you, space. 
Do you not use your computer in your office to do other things like community projects and club projects and that? Surfing? I have, I have my laptop set up beside my chair in the living room. So, uh -huh. and, and I do okay. that because I can cast the TV. So my personal stuff tends to be there. And again, it's segregating my work from Got my it. personal. The other thing about my, my office is I really do not let people in my office. Uh -huh. Just because I have work things laying around. I yeah, don't want everyone seeing client information. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. Right, right. Even if it is my friends, even if we're very close, they don't need to know what XXX client is doing or right. what their bank account is or, you know, a lot of stuff that, that really is confidential that shouldn't be strewn about the house. Needs to be in a certain place that's a little bit right. more private. So I guess yeah. these are all issues that, that COVID people that are now working at home that are used to going into offices are dealing with. Oh, right. Now, right. Well, you know, when are we going to start recording? Oh, we already did. We are recording. <laughs> a long time ago. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's over 100 degrees here. Okay. Uh, well, it's like, um, I was working and I have a hand, my dog has just recently gotten this, this habit where she jumps up and goes, on my hand on the mouse and I, I swiped and, and <laughs> got where I wasn't supposed to be and I'm like you can't sneak up on me but I can imagine with children and stuff like that too that um you just can't you know? turn them off they don't have an off button you right. and you re you remember that video of the guy that was doing like a newspaper report oh, yeah. or something uh, and, and the kids kept coming in and the lady kept coming in and grabbing them and dragging them out. So funny. So funny. Well, so there's, but there's a lot of the companies, the bigger companies that it really had to scramble to get their, um, their workforce to work at home. When they sent their, their staff home, they sent them home with equipment and they said that it had to be in a room with a door that closed with a lock on it. Wow. You all, especially in big cities, you don't have places big enough. No, not at all. Not at all. People that are was, purposing their living room or their dining room, even their bedroom. Yep. Yeah, well this, my information comes from my brother-in-law who works for social security oh we're talking government people. yeah wow wow wow, wow. wow. but and i was glad i was still glad that we could when the irs practitioner line opened back up even though they were all working from home you could hear you know kids in the background or you know <laughs> animals <laughs> and it was one that somebody said they could hear a rooster crowing when they called wow. <laughs> I was talking to a guy in Australia and I'm like, do you have birds? He goes, chooks. Those are chooks. <laughs> like, what did he say? <laughs> but you know what? It isn't, I used to be very strict about don't let the, in, don't let the dog in during the day, you know, mm -hmm. and it's that professional and da, da, da. And now it's like, hey, dog. <laughs> because and then their brother's like, hey, there's my dog, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so are we've, it, it, it's uh, that the image of working from your home on the corner of your breakfast table selling on Avon, you know, those days have that's finally been, I hope, you know, is out of people's psyche that when you're working from home, that you really can be working. Absolutely. Not, Did you see and it isn't just. Well, as a as a uh, uh, zoning man said to me one time, he said, "You know, this this home office license is for you know little women who you know sell Avon." He said, really? Really? He said "You said you had you had employees." But there are office. so many security issues and things to think about. I'm saying that was just fifteen. Odd years ago, this old geezer is telling me I can't work out of my house, and I'm just playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still 
but but people like the social security and and that they they've got sensitive information well, and so they do, do things like they carry laptops in there when they I travel and they go through never. airports and they lose them. In the like 80s? The, in the like 80s? the IRS. I had a client <laughs> yeah. of an IRS. They, they, they lose stuff. Oh, my gosh. This guy was in the middle of the IRS. I uh, 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 had a client having an IRS audit. And that laptops weren't that popular back there, but they had laptops. And then it was real intense at first. And then this guy like, disappeared. Disappear. Like, what's going on? <laughs> and the clients were like, How long do we wait? I mean, so I said, Well, let's get in touch with this guy and go, uh, This is pretty stressful not knowing <laughs> if we're done. And he got his laptop stolen out of his car. Yeah. You know, that was before <laughs> encryption and all that. Mm -hmm. He said, and he, To me, not to my client, I, I need, can you help me? Like, <laughs> paper his file he just wanted the bare minimum to get that thing to his supervisor wow wow he lost was, he, you know so yeah dennis i was dealing with the irs and uh, the agent had a computer stolen out of her car and also her cell phone and so that explained why whenever i called the cell phone i was getting this the, the mailbox is full <laughs> and apparently the IRS is too cheap to buy a new business card because it had the old cell phone number on it. Oh my goodness. That's that's insane. That's in oh, but these are all the security risks though that, that people really should be thinking about. We've kind of been through the ringer a little bit and been dealing with this for several years, but our many, industry. many, many people are new to this, you know? I, um, I'm tempted. Well, I can't with COVID, but part of me wants to go visit my employees and see where they're working. I mean, I can <laughs> see where they're working um, through the video, but, you, you know, I, and, and so I'm just going to have to have a conversation like, sure, you know, hey, are you, you turning off your machine at night? Your, you know, your teenager can't come in and try to, you know, and they do have right. separate machines. They have business machines. And it's going to be up off the dining room table. So when your kid comes in uh, in the morning <laughs> right. with their cereal bowl, it's not going to empty into well, your you know, <laughs> And but when Jamie was still at Hewitt, he was doing a lot of their cybersecurity stuff and there was a software it was no before was what he was using oh yeah so do you want to share uh, training no before yeah it's uh uh it sends out like fake phishing emails stuff yeah. like that so if the people click on them you get notifications and yeah it was a uh, mark we can I never click email. on any links Mark is saying something in the background. Oh, he was just, he recognized the software and said yeah, they also but, did but training. It, also has, it has incorporates training videos. There's yep. other things. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's a plug-in for, um, for Outlook. Is to, uh, that, uh, in, like it'll show in Outlook. There's a plug-in. Mm -hmm. You can report a phishing email. Yep. Uh, also, there's a thing called, they have a tool called Second Chance, where when you go to click on a link, It'll show where it actually resolves to. And then, are you uh, sure? It'll say yeah, <laughs> uh, abort or you know, continue. And abort. So, abort. so that could be yeah. helpful, you know, if you think you're going to uh, Microsoft or some other site and it comes up, you know, some weird name and and dot R U, you know, it's like yeah, probably not. You know to be right, suspicious. So. <clears throat> That was fabulous software. It got everybody on their toes thinking about it, everything. <clears throat> Will people, though, purchase that and, and do that? I mean, because there are so much more now working at home that you need to be aware of security-wise like that. Um, and, and I, you know... Will people, well, will the employers pay for that for the employees? Well, on these people working at home, aren't they using like, aren't they logged into their company network that has lost security? Not yeah, everybody, are, but hopefully yeah. they are. Well, yeah, that's been a huge opening 
for safety. Is yeah. Is it? Because you're not. Yeah. That's what I was wondering about. These people that are working from home, if their employers fitted them with their own, you know, the comp the company laptop or whatever, and mm -hmm. that had all the security built in that they could track them rather than just using their own equipment. I could see I, using your own, your own equipment could be a real problem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, yeah, then there's, companies there's, may be getting caught with their with the VPNs not working with their with their uh, internal software once they got uh, off site. So, uh, okay. so that was the other side of it too. Yeah. Also, depending on you know how much you've planned for that bandwidth, um, mm -hmm. you, you, know, bandwidth. you may have had you know twenty five percent of your organization working you know on the VP, through a VPN at any one time when one hundred percent of your organization is working through a VPN. Mm -hmm. uh, that can mm -hmm. cause uh, bandwidth problems. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, systems are more, you know, at least in an office or whatever, you've got a little more controlled environment. It takes people you know, at home uh, where there's all Internet of Things devices that are never getting patched updated, or updated patched. Or, yeah. you know, that, that kind of, and, and routers and things that are never, you know, that are, so you have a, you know, kind of a hostile <laughs> environment, or can be, you know, so. So everybody brings their laptops home, some update, some don't, and some softwares are update sensitive, like QuickBooks, and, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you know, all of a sudden, well, it boils you're, you're down in the office to, and you're not on the same version anymore. It, it boils down to managing them. Yeah, you've got to yeah. have, you have to have a tool to be able to, I mean, at least some tools to be able to get some insight into that stuff. Um, I'm more concerned about the, the client, the small clients, and they're not IT people. Yeah. They're not used to this. They've run home. They've got people on their own machines trying to, you know, die. they've run out and got gotten splashed up or something, and they're dialing into their, their desktop. But, well, one, um, yeah. one thing we've been using is, uh, is auto, it's called, it's auto box. I may have, mentioned it before it's a, a u t o m o x and they um so that's a patching solution uh and the nice thing about that is you can start with a, just a few uh systems so and it's five dollars per system per uh month uh, which, which is that for the okay. full for the full patching and, and you can it's not only well it's a little more than patching because um you have to learn powershell to do it but you can do um you can install software uh remotely you can do a couple different things so it's a it's a nice uh a nice tool to have uh, a lot of those things you can't get into with just a handful of of systems I gotta believe that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't patch a lot of third-party software yet. They're you know they're constantly expanding that, uh, mm -hmm. but they um, but they do obviously do Windows and they do some of the common the common things. But you can also get an inventory of the system. So if there's a particular piece of software that you're concerned about, you can you can get an inventory um, of all the systems that have that on it and see what versions they are having. So you could even, you know, at least provide. That would help. Yes, for sure. For yeah, sure. I, gotta, I gotta believe that there wasn't a lot of contingency planning for something like this, especially with the smaller companies. So they're probably going by the seat of their pants right now or reading off, you know, reading the procedures off the internet or something like that, you know. Right, right. Let's Google it, see what we can find. Well, I don't think yeah. we really expected it to take this long. I think we all, it was like running from a hurricane. We, we all ran. And, and then, now what? Right now, here we are. Here we are. Well, well, one of the sort of back, but not back, and you know, so. But now we're saying go back to the beginning. Game. It's like we need a long-term plan to run our business. Who can? And need to phone? think about security, which mm -hmm. people just simply are not. I, I read a thread that was saying Q box or splash top. Yeah, that was a good thread. <laughs> it, it, it was, but I'm thinking of it as security wise. I, I uh, have QBox on certain clients because I do not want to go in to their entire system. All right. I want shared is QuickBooks. And they trust right. me. They're like, here's a login to a machine. And I'm like, 
I can and, see and you know what you can I can see everything and I'm glad I'm an honest person, but I don't want anything to happen to anything. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Non accounting related and then go, well, Sarah logs in. She's the Sarah, Sarah was the last one that logged in before <laughs> this major crash blew up our system. Right. Sarah. And you know, I used I used Splashtop uh, quite a bit at one point and I stopped using it because I sat down. I'm like, wait. What is my liability if something <laughs> happens on a client's computer and I have full full access to it? Absolutely. So I I completely switched to QBox for sharing desktop files. Yeah. And I actually use QBox to share desktop files with myself. Yep. So, so all of my too. desktop files are on QBox. Yep. yep. Then I know okay, if I have an I have an old machine that every once in a while I'll fire up for something and that thing's like, I had an updated Q box. <laughs> <laughs> going crazy. You can turn that off <laughs> so that it doesn't bog it down. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love Q box because not only am I not putting my, myself and my company at risk by logging into somebody else's computer, but I know that the files are backed up. So say my computer crashes or we jump in the car for a impromptu trip to out of state and we have to pack and be run out of the house really fast and I forget my computer, but my husband brings his, I can download QBox onto his computer and I've got, and I've got my files. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and we still need remote access for things like clients will help for like, I just screwed something up. Will you help me? And I need yeah, to be able see, to in that case, I'm yeah, but you do and Zoom. And I'm talking to yeah. them. You do Zoom, but see, working. I'm like, uh, it, it, well, it depends on what features you need, but, um, yeah, Zoom, Zoom is a, is a good, a, a good way. Uh, I like a uh, remote PC because they don't want to go to zoom and put in a number and all that. They're like, help me. And I go, okay, click, <laughs> you know, now the other way to set it up is they have to let you in, which means they have to be on site. I don't really like, I don't enjoy work like that because I envision them pacing behind their computer, waiting to be around their computer. <laughs> watch, you know, I just, <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the only two I have left are uh, two clients that are in multi-user all day long and I just hung cheap computers off their network and that's, they call it the accounting machine and I can go into my machine 24 seven. So I remote into a machine that's specifically for us. So that's one way to do it too. Cause if you look at, you know, if it's going to be a long-term client, it's, it's worth it sometimes just to be it, able to work. It depends the on the client. Like you said, it depends yeah. on the client, how big they are and what yeah. type of organization. Mm -hmm. um, I have some government facilities that I do not want into their system. <laughs> <laughs> All I want is QuickBooks right now. Thank you. <laughs> so, and Sarah, that on the same kind of thread, we were talking earlier about a podcast that you had seen. Yeah, or I was, um, I wish I'd taken notes. It was, it was one of those, um, I get a lot of newsletters and uh, CPA trend lines is one of my favorites. So they featured a lot of their stuff. You have to be a member in order to read it, but every once in a while they give, they, they don't, you have to be a member. So I don't know who these men are, Bill Reeb and Stephen Sachs. So it was just a little Zoom with the two of them talking about um, the COVID era of accounting firms. And so they're talking about accounting firms that have had to, you know, we've got partner, manager, senior. Okay, so you've got a management structure. They were talking about how COVID has exposed what we all know, the ones like I've, I've had, my biggest, I think I'm six, six employees, but it ex is exposed poor management, uh, habits. Okay. So, and, and they really were funny. It really is a good, a, a good podcast to listen to. And if you, if you have to train someone or you're in charge of someone that, you know, and it, they were funny because in my day, you know, 
they go, here, do this. And I go, I don't know how to do that, but boy, I, do, I figured it out, you know? And um, that same mentality is like, here's a task. And you don't know whether they can really do it or do it well. So then you wait to the deadline and then you find out they did a horrible job at it. Well, why are you asking them now? Why weren't you following up with them while they were working on it going, how you doing? How, let me see it. You know, that kind of stuff. So uh, it, they were talking about the hierarchy of uh, responsibility of making uh, managers or supervisors, anybody that has one person, even that they, their success you, it, it, it's your head and at all different levels. Okay. So what happened with COVID is everybody goes home and now they're like, you know, uh, you've got a combination of things going on. You've got a crowd who was like hanging out till retirement. I know how to use my computer, but I'm not going to learn all this fancy stuff because I'm out of here in less than, you know, three or four years. And all of a sudden they're zooming and going online. And then you have another crowd where, uh, you know, if you're supervising, they, they stick their head in their office. You know, there, there's that, how, how do you, you doing? Check with and there's doing the, the water cooler person. talk and all that. So now everybody's sort of, unless they come up with a system where you're not isolated, now it's even getting worse. But what it's exposed is the real worker bees, not, not so much worker bees, because it isn't the hours they were talking about. They were talking about producing. That instead of just being a body there for eight hours, and yes, you're, you're judged on how much you're producing and as far as billable and all that, but oh, what was the, 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 he said, okay, so you do the Zoom and you, the person's sitting at their desk, so you know they're at work they're working. And then there's another woman who's walking down the, walking down the sidewalk, walking her dog, but she's on the phone. Now, which do you assume is, is working or is more productive at the moment? Well, probably the woman on her phone. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, that, that, um, the idea that just because you are in front of a computer that you're act actually productive and producing, Right. Um, some people, and, and these guys are partners and they're like, yeah, you work a little bit and then whoop, I'm over on Facebook. And I, you know, it's like you're, you work in spurts and you're not sitting there. It's not like a factory where you're sitting there putting something in a box eight hours a day and you can measure that. So it was, it, I put the link in, it's a really good conversation on how do you manage people? How do you manage time and productivity? And then you take the employees that have like always done a mediocre job. They did okay. And you never really let them go because if you let them go, then you got to rehire, you hire somebody and you got to retrain. And so you just sort of put up with the mediocre behavior, you know, be work. Um, but when they when they started sending people home, the ones that are really workhorses, sort of uh, producers, sort of start shining, and the other ones are actually getting worse. And so that's where it's even more important for the real, you know, the hands-on. And then anyway, it was just a they they touched on all kinds of topics, but um, yeah, I like what it what it what hit me is. I have some employees who their time has been the same. See the dog puts it on the, the this thing on the mouse. Stop that. Um, um, her hours are the same. Her production is the same. Her clients are happy. Her work's getting out, but I haven't really seen a change. I've, and then uh, another staff would, I'm getting like whole seven hour days, whole eight hour days on the timesheet. And I'm like, Okay, I know I can't do that because I've got a dog and, and you know, and, and I'm home. And so you get fragmented. You, you, you don't sit in this chair for a solid eight hour day. You just don't do it. And you're not going to do and it. And you should really, actually, it's not very healthy to. No, but 
it, I will go for a walk. I'll go into the house. You know, I might take a break and watch, you know, one of my heartlands, you know. So it's, it, it, you know, so it, anyway, I just, I just wanted to share, I put the link because it was a really good conversation. I, I just don't know how to, we're value billing, so I don't need their hours so much for billing as I do to see who's, who's the producer and who isn't. And maybe I underbid the hours or why, why does this take you an eight hour day when I really thought it would take you four? Right. Right. Uh, why is it taking so, eight? So you have to actually really know what the employee is doing to be able to determine. And you know what that takes? Management. I have to look, I have to talk to her. I have to, you know, and I have to have a, a management, uh, a task program where okay. I can, you know, give everybody those tools to, to work as fast as they can. Um, but uh, anyway, it's just a whole new world. It's a whole new world. And especially for the crowd who had no intention of learning online tools and yeah. save files of the cloud. I mean, you know, it's either sink or swim for them. <laughs> So, anyway, I wanted to share that. Or swim, even Zooms, though. I mean, how many Zoom faux pas have you seen? They've been hysterical. Oh, you forget the <laughs> camera's on and you go, okay, the meeting's over. And you stand up and walk away and you're in your underwear or something. Yeah. <laughs> if you have underwear on. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, gosh, who was it? Somebody said they were, this was before COVID, probably 18 months ago or so but they were meeting with a tax client. It was pretty late. The guy was tired or sleep deprived. I think he was a musician or something. And the guy gets up and walks away from the camera or walks away from the computer, buck naked. <laughs> buck naked. <laughs> with a nice shirt on. No. Oh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, oh, well, that's yeah. interesting. Then, you know, well, then the tax two guys. I, mean, yeah, I, was, two guys, I but, almost clicked leave the meeting, and then I usually sit here and do other stuff. So I don't usually get up. Yeah, but, you know, who, what do you do in that situation? Do you, like, say, hey, guy, I, you know, I can, <laughs> I can see you. Hi. We see you. Hello. <laughs> it's, it's a spouse or a child or something. That's what I know. Yeah, I think I probably Your would just click the meeting and not, not we don't say judge. anything. I don't think, you know, I think in when all this was fresh and new, especially in our industry where you need to be professional and we're worried about our level of respect and we need respect and we need to, and so we're worried about things like that. But now it's like, you can, you, what is it that, um, was it the attorney's? somebody said something about this woman was not being professional online or something i think she was like videoed or something she was in a bikini Have in, 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 oh, in, yeah. in oh. florida that the, the, she, she, she was in a hotel and all of these attorneys these women are like oh yeah and they're all doing videos in their bikinis. It's hysterical. I think it was the doctors in bikinis. Was it doctors? But it, oh, yeah, that's what it but, was. But they weren't working. They were in a swimming pool. Right. But, but, talk business. but the, the, the thing with the attorneys was the Florida Bar Association actually put something out because they were still conducting court via Zoom. Yeah. And the, the, the bar association had to tell people that they actually had to get dressed and they couldn't be doing court from in bed naked. And, and well, you know, just like, thank God they did that. <laughs> but I, I want to ask another question. Though. But why do people have to be told that? I know, right? But, but I think the lines are being blurred of mm -hmm. when you're available now. They oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. That you're available twenty for discipline. You have to, now. you don't only have, have yourself, that nine to five at the office. Your client Someone can call you eight o'clock at night, ten o'clock at night. No problem. Don't answer. Yeah, I well, think but that. that's what you decide. You get to yeah. choose. Now, if one and of my stores calls on a Sunday morning at ten o'clock, it's an emergency. 
Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Just work or something. And I, you know, I can just see someone panicked and that, and that happened Sunday. Um, I, well, we talked, we, we talked about that last Friday. Right. Where the, the ad for uh, QB payments popped up. Yeah. And so she clicked on it and it over, it turned right. off the, uh, and the whole system was uh, down now. services Dude. program. Right. Did right. they do it again Sunday morning? No, no, this was, this was last, I forget oh. what day it was, but yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, it was a weekend, it was morning and it was like, right, are you right. calling me? And I'm like, some, they wouldn't call me unless it was, you know, right. and I, I, uh, figured out where it was. I got a one note. I took screenshots and now, and I sent it to him as a PDF. So, and now any of my staff, if they get that, we're starting to use one note as our brain dump. Yeah. Let's see if Sarah put anything in the one note about blah, blah, blah. in the search, yep. it's becoming like a wiki. Yeah. Like your own little Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty, guys. We are at our time limit. We Anything are. else we want to talk about before we end for the week? No, uh, stay safe for yeah. over the week. I might have more information on um, the merchant service company that I use that works All with right. QuickBooks Desktop and Point of Sale and your website and... Good mobile and all that has never worked with QBO. <gasps> They've got it ready. Skyline. Oh, wonderful. Skyline. <laughs> and they're also, um, what's not ready is a customer portal where your customer can go to a portal and see all their invoices and their history and everything. So, oh, nice. Yeah. And it, you use it inside QBO. So it nice. looks like it's part of QBO. I'm really excited. So I can't wait. Yeah. So, so play with it some more and, sure. and come and talk to us like, you know, next week. Yeah, and week I told him I could, I could bring Jamie on to give us a, he does like a 15 minute uh, demo thing. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not really a QBO person, so I would want you QBO people Love to, to have Jamie on again. I think Jamie was on, might have been so long ago we were Google. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That's a long time ago, I three know, or four right? years. Right. <clears throat> so, anyway, that's, uh, yeah, I'm real excited to play with it. So play. Well, I'll we'll talk to Jamie. Um, okay. We'll do. We'll do a hangout and we'll dedicate it to to okay. Skyline. All right. All right. That sounds wonderful. All righty, everybody. Stay safe. Have a nice weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. See yes. you all next week. Same place. Yep. Same time. Yay.